Republican primaries caucuses in 15 states, 865 delegates at stake. Former President Donald Trump widely expected to sweep the races in all of the states holding contests today. Last night, Trump won the North Dakota Republican caucuses, beating Nikki Haley by about 70 points. Trump likely will be awarded all 29 of that state's delegates. Right, right. In an interview with conservative media company RSBN last night, Donald Trump expressed confidence heading into today's vote, while Nikki Haley made her closing arguments to voters in Texas in front of a packed rally in Fort Worth. I just say to the people that are watching now, if you could, go out and vote, because it's not Haley, she's not a problem. Uh, I think she's very negative for the party, but she's not a problem in terms of winning because we're winning by a lot. The only place we, we expected to lose was D.C. because that's the swamp. Tomorrow, uh, we could very well win every state in record numbers. That's what we're hoping for. They call it Super Tuesday for a reason. And uh, I think it's going to be record setting. I think. I hope so. Republicans lost a vote on Mayorkas. They lost a vote on Israel. The RNC chair lost her job. And Donald Trump had his fingerprints on all of it. At some point, maybe we should say the reason that America keeps losing is because of Donald Trump. We can change all of that. But in order to change it, it's going to take a lot of courage. Courage from everybody here. Courage for me to run. And courage for every one of you to know, don't complain about what happens in a general election if you don't vote in this primary. We are blessed to live in America. And we know that America's better than this. Now we have to do something about it. So this is what I will tell you. Tomorrow, you got a job to do. I need you to vote, and I need you to take 10 people with you. I, I, I tell you this, John Hyland, just watching Nikki Haley and watching her grow on, on the campaign trail. And I will say, again, Meek and I have known her since she was a state legislator. She's pretty darn good as a state legislator as far as her skill set uh, as a politician. But watching that Nikki Haley on stage uh, and understanding that she's running in Donald Trump's party, um, I, I just can't help but look at that person and think if she were to run as an independent candidate, let's say she could run as an independent candidate and get access in all 50 states, which, of course, I don't think she could. You know, that person, that message could do better than Ross Perot, especially this year. That's somebody who could actually be a contender as an independent candidate. I don't know. I mean, there, there's obviously there's been there's the, the there's a chunk of voters who are obviously, as we know, vastly dissatisfied with the two, with the choice at the top of the of the both the, the presumptive tops of both tickets. Right. You also have this growth in the independent sec in the independent segment of the electorate. And there's been a lot, you know, in a period for the last 20 or 30 years, where we've seen this intense polarization. There hasn't been really much space for you've got you've got 40 percent, 42, 43 percent of both parties of the, of the electorate on one side or the other that were it didn't matter whether the candidates were anyone they liked. There was just never really space for a third party. People look up pined for it. But the truth was beyond even the ballot access questions in a hyper polarized climate, um, the parties were generally pretty satisfied with their respective candidates. This is a different situation. And Joe, I, I, I think it's, it's we're in such uncharted territory in terms of the amount of voter dissatisfaction with uh, Trump and Biden that you might be right. I don't know. It, it, you know. The interesting question to me is not so much what would happen if Nikki Haley were to be uh, a, in the, uh, an independent candidate or a third party candidate. The interesting question to me is what would have happened. It's the question I think that will haunt a lot of people on the Republican side is what would have happened if she had found her way to being yes. to, to the clarity that she's found and the strength that she's found, the voice she's found, whatever you want to call it. If she had found this position not in January of this year, but last a year ago, January, or even last a year ago, June, in June, if she'd been doing this, if she'd been not necessarily just this good, but this clear about the space she occupied in the Republican ferment, how much more of a challenge she might have I been think to Trump. She was had to she vice been, president she, back was, then. she seemed, I mean, she has toggled between kind of Trump skeptic and, and Trump uh, admirer for, for her entire uh, career since Trump's been on the scene. But if she had been in this place, 
uh, and con yeah. consistently campaigning this way from the middle of last year, how much closer would this Republican nomination fight have been? And she just came to the, she got, she found clarity way too late. Mm. And I think that's the big question that kind of hovers over um, over what might have been, and in some sense, what happens in the future, because there are still a lot of people who wonder what will happen to Nikki Haley, whether she will have this clarity after she leaves the race, whether that's tomorrow or, or some other day soon to come. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and perhaps after, oh, I'm sorry, Willie, uh, I, I, perhaps, Willie, after she, uh, after this race, after the general election, if Donald Trump loses again, then she has a great argument. If Donald Trump wins, of course, uh, it, it's a c completely different situation. You know, the thing is, Willie, a lot of people made calculations, Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis and others, that they could ignore Donald Trump, that they yeah. could push him aside, that they could pat his followers on the head, that Alvin Bragg or some other prosecutor was going to take care of Donald Trump. And that's why they didn't do it a year before. And I must say, if somebody were running against a, a Democrat uh, in a Democratic primary that was, was suitably damaged, they probably would try to ignore that Democrat and, and chart their own path. So it has been a very tortured run, but there's always been this lane. And I don't know how big the lane is. Liz Cheney would tell you and Adam Kinzinger would tell you not very big. I'm not so sure uh, if, if, if you just came, came forward from the very beginning with the strong conviction, I can win, this guy can't. Uh, I'm, I'm not so sure she wouldn't be doing better right now, but we are where we are, and this is actually a strong message. She, she'll probably lose uh, everything tonight, uh, but I, I don't think she's playing for tonight. I think she's playing for tomorrow. I think she's looking over the horizon. Yeah, she may have a future. I guess the question is, would it have mattered? We'll never know. But if she had done what John suggests last year and come out stronger and not use the vagaries of kicking yeah. sideways oh. and no one qu quite knew what any of that meant, trying to have it both ways and keep Donald Trump's supporters, maybe that would have made a difference. Also, maybe it wouldn't have. Maybe this is just Donald Trump's party and the yeah. loyalists are so strong in his corner that it wouldn't have mattered. We, we just won't know. It is strange, John, to be sitting here on the morning of Super Tuesday something we've covered so many times before, and really to have no drama whatsoever. Not to say, okay, is this candidate going to steal this state or that state? It's just Donald Trump expected to roll through the 15 states. I guess the question is, will Nikki Haley drop out tonight or tomorrow morning? Will she hang in for a couple more weeks? It'll still be two more weeks probably before Donald Trump technically secures the nomination in terms of the number of delegates. But here we are just rolling toward this general election now as we turn the corner to a state of the union and everywhere this feels like a, a milestone week where now we can see these two candidates going head to head yeah the general election is, is be upon us as of, as of this week president biden of course gonna have a clean sweep tonight on the democratic side for republicans nikki haley's team suggests maybe they have a shot at vermont but probably not and everything so therefore trump's gonna win everything there too so the question is what happens next to haley could she even drop out tonight is there an event later this week perhaps in her home state her team's not saying they're also she herself has all along said i'm in this through super tuesday recently has suggested she left the door open to maybe staying in longer than that that maybe she'll stay a few more weeks until trump mathematically becomes the nominee or even beyond that that she wouldn't suspend her campaign we know that trump's first criminal trial now just three weeks away <laughs> maybe she keeps her eye on that maybe Maybe she tries to suggest something could happen at the convention. She just wants to keep her options open. She now campaigns to truism, and when they run out of money, at least for now, that's not an issue for Haley. She's still got enough money to keep this going for a while. And what she has done, though, is she has displayed Trump's vulnerabilities. That we have seen her put up, even though she's only won one contest, the one in Washington, D.C., she's put up a fairly impressive size of the vote in a couple of states, New Hampshire, South Carolina, among them, and revealed some concerns for Trump going forward, some issues he's going to have to address come November. We've seen these polls where a lot of Haley supporters say, I'll never back Donald Trump, even if he's the nominee. I won't do it. I'll either vote for Joe Biden or I'll stay home. And, Mika, as long as she stays in this race and she continues to deliver messages, these anti-Trump messages, she's delivering them to audiences who otherwise wouldn't hear them. She's being covered on Fox News. She's being conservative, covered and conservative media who would never play Joe Biden. And one thing to keep an eye on tonight, Mika, is turnout. We've been mm -hmm. talking about this since Iowa, which is, yes, Donald Trump has a big win, but the turnout is tiny, and he gets 50-some yeah. percent of that turnout. If you look at last night in North Dakota, which he won by 70 or 72 points, that sounds like a big number. 
he got about 1,800 total votes. So yes, the wow. margins will be huge, right. but people are not turning out for him in this primary season. I guess we'll learn a lot by what people do and how they're feeling from the results tonight.